Marmite or jam? Marmite. Oh, and get rid of the soppy grin. What, this? Mm. Oh, no, this is a permanent fixture. You have made me the happiest man alive. You look gormless. You look beautiful. <laughs> you know, this is just the beginning. Things are only going to get better from now on. Mm. Well, I hope so. <laughs> Say, somebody's in a good mood. Oh. <laughs> shall you tell her or shall I? Um, tell me what? <laughs> Hmm. Well, at least we've got your wage coming in still. Not once the baby arrives. You can go back whenever you want. But we agreed. I want to bond with my baby. If I can't carry it, the least I can do is look after it when it does arrive. Yeah, and you will. Everything's going to be fine. No, if we're skint, I'll be forced to I go back. I will support you and the baby, I promise. All right? Good builders are always in demand, and your dad's one of the best. Yeah. And if he doesn't need me, then I'll just find somewhere else. Main thing is, we talk about things, not avoid them. Point taken. I wonder what's uh, going on with the pub. Might go and see if there's some news. Ooh. It's Foxy. Shane Fox. Anyone in your army, mate? Yeah. Right, I'll see you later. See you later. Now then, how's it going? Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mum, I get it. You're pleased, yeah, Paris. Yeah, told you a bit. <laughs> I think this marks the beginning of a whole new chapter. Yeah, that's what I said, go on. Hey, what made you change your mind? You gave him the knockback last week. That was a good idea. We'll have to celebrate. Oh, Mum, can we not keep this to ourselves? I mean, not everyone's going to be as chuffed as you are. Well, have you set a date yet? Well, give us a chance. Well, you don't want a long engagement. All the best venues are booked up years ahead. It's not going to be that sort of wedding. Why not? Come on, let's push the boat out. The boat's capsized, Mum. I'm up to my ears in debt. Well, that'll sort itself out. No, it won't. He even had to offer Owen a share in the pub. Oh, are things that desperate? Yeah, they are. How big a share? Half. Uh, it was either that or risk losing the place altogether. You're up late? Yes, well, this was not a lie and I hardly slept a wink last night. And when I did finally drop off, I decided to give myself the luxury of an extra hour. And what woke you up in the night? Guilty conscience. My conscience, unlike the rest of my anatomy, is in fine fettle. Is that tea fresh? I just made it. Mm. I'm surprised you slept at all. I didn't. Why? By deciding unilaterally not to tell Roy about St. John's letter, you have embroiled me in a secret. A secret? It's no... Roy has a right to see it. Yes, and Roy had a right to be brought up by two parents, but St. John disappeared at the first sign of trouble. Exactly. It's a complete minefield. He needs answers, and that letter could help find them. Some things are best left in the past. Change the subject. Morning. morning. Oh, good morning. It's busy down there? No, no. I'm leaving Hannah to hold the fort. Nip to the cash and carry. Get my bag. See you later. Bye. Bye. I'm not comfortable with this. Any of it. The thing is, if I did accept your offer, I'd still have to shell out more for labour and materials just to get the job finished, and there's still no guarantee I'll see a penny of it. It's a non starter, I've told you. Yeah, well, what do I do? I can't write off the debt. I mean, this job has cost me thousands already. No, it's cost her thousands, and she'll have to pay a bill like anybody else. Yeah, but look, she says she can't, which is why she's offered me a share of the pub. Do you know what bugs me? I've turned work down for this job, and there's nothing out there now. And she should be at school, never mind coming in here for toast. What do you expect? He's hopeless. Well, they could at least make sure she has a decent breakfast. Well, she is being fair if it's by you. Just tell Stella to pay up. I have. She can't. So get the jobs on hold still. Well, it's only in the latest. All right, Max, come and put your coat on. Oh, mate, don't make me chase you. I haven't got the energy. Well, that's because you're dead on your feet. No work, no play. I play. I've just played top trumps with Max. Max! doing too much. It's bad for you. There's plenty of people who do two jobs. And anyway, it's only for one more week. Anyway, I can manage. Right, come on. Bag. See you later. See you, love. Thanks, Mum. Have you no bread in the flat? Not lovely warm, freshly toasted bread like that, no. With strawberry jam. Free, you mean. Would well, you want me to pay? No, put your money away. Just don't make a habit of it. It's not a good place to see it. No, of course I am. You're welcome here any time. You better look lively, though, or else she's going to be late for school. Yeah, plenty of time. It's quarter two. Really? Yes. 
And Bessie Street are really keen on punctuality. It goes on a report and everything. She was never late when she lived with me. She's right, come on, we'll eat her on the way. Well, tea tells me, darling. Only the first builder to take a share of the properties they're working on. It's an asset. She should never have set us to work if she couldn't afford to pay the bill. Simple. Yeah, my sentiments exactly. She thought it was just a formality. So if I see another job, I should go for it, yeah? Well, I'm, I need to do some number crunching before I can answer that. That's a yes. I thought the wheels would have come off by now. What? <sighs> Tim and Faye. I thought she'd be back home with us within a week. Couldn't we just have a small celebration? No. Just family and friends? Mum, the builders have down tools. Me and Carla labouring. Mm, yeah, speaking of which, better get down there and crack on. Well, I've got a bit put by. I could help. Oh, we need thousands and thousands. Are you texting anyway? Giving Eva the good news. Oh, she's replied. Really thrilled for you. Already picked out a new dress. <laughs> oh. Have you told Leanne yet? No, not yet. No, she's not going to like it. Maybe you should text her. No, I'll tell her face to face. In fact, I'm going to go now. Come on, you're coming with me. Ow! Sorry. It's twice. It's like Sweeney Flaming Todd's in here. He was a highly underrated stylist, actually. Remembered for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, one more cut and I need a blood transfusion. Sorry, mate. Don't call me mate. Sorry, Mr. Tanner. Uh, sorry. Would you like me to finish? Hmm? Well, I think I can manage a trim. Uh, well, I don't think your mind's quite on your job today, you know. Thanks, Gran. All those late nights in the bistro, they seem to be taking their toll. Not you, are not Gran. I can handle it, oh, all right? Clearly not. Now, go on, make yourself useful. I'm sorry about this, Dennis. <laughs> well, I'll be in the basement, then, cleaning the pie machine if you need me. Oh. It, it's what we both want. I love him and I want to marry him. Fine. Fine. Was there anything else? Well, dare I hope you might be there on the big day. I'm busy. Well, we haven't set one yet. I think I'll be busy then, too. Come on, Leanne. Don't be like that with your mum. Oh, yeah, come on. Cut us some slack. He deserves some credit. Yeah, I mean, if Stella's prepared to give me a chance, why can't you? Because I don't trust you. I'm not going to stand here pretending to be happy for you, because I'm not. Oh. Well, at least join us for a drink uh, tonight. Count me out. Oh, Leanne. No, I mean it. I won't be there. <sighs> this is the worst job I've ever done. I should be how many nails, not the calculator. I hate her for putting you in this position. I've done my sums. If I suck up all the debts, delay payment to my own suppliers, call in a few favours, work all the hours, I might be able to get this place up and running and ready to start trading again. Might? But it'll be backs against the wall, and if there are any other problems... Well, I don't see why you're the one that's having to bend over backwards to help her. You should walk away. Love, I'm in it too deep here. If the Rovers goes down, I go down with it. But surely you can force her to pay. I've got to send the heavies in. Well, I thought you were the heavies, but you've done it before. Yeah, I have. And I could go down the legal route if I wanted, but I don't. I don't know why you're being so nice to her. Look, we're all losers in this. She didn't want this to happen, OK? She is gutted. I don't want you saddled with a pub. You know, maybe all this business with Tim has hardened me, but if I were you, I wouldn't stand for it. Anyway, we're having a little gathering in the bistro and we'd love it if you and Dennis would join us. Oh, well, love to come. I know they fight like cat and dog, but, well, they were made for each other. <laughs> Sounds like you and Dennis. Hey, cheeky. Oh, uh, what's going on with the pub? I hear the, uh, the building work stopped. Oh, ask Stella. I don't want to get involved in any of that. So, 7.30 for 8. Put your glad rags on. I always make an effort. See we'll be there. Bye. So, looks like I'm going to be in on my own tonight, then. I don't get many invitations. Yours and Dennis' his social life is better than mine. Give over. Hi. <laughs> Hello, love. Oh, right, I need sugar now. OK, um, eeny, meeny, miny... Both. That's one fifty, love, please. Okay. How are you, anyway? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Not good. Bad. Good. All right, see you later. Bye. Bye. What was it that Gloria said? They fight like cat and dog, but men for each other. 
You know, there's another couple I could say that about. Well, me and Tina are arranging history now. It wasn't that long ago. We all thought it'd be you two getting engaged. It just shows how wrong you can be, doesn't it? But don't you think there's a way back after the baby's born? I mean, it's not an ordinary pregnancy. Look, she's saying it like it's up to me. She finished things, remember? And I don't know, I just... I don't think she's ever going to want me back. It was out of order for you to undermine me in front of a customer like that. Dennis walked out of here looking like that Vincent van Gogh. Oh, come on, it was a tiny nick. And anyway, that's not the point. It was unprofessional. It is unprofessional to turn up in an unfit state. I am in a fit state. <sighs> Carly, would you try and talk some sense into this one, please? Because I am going home. Bye-bye. Oh, I don't listen to anything I say. What's wrong with you? Nothing. I just made a schoolboy error, that's all. And she says it's because I'm overworking. Well, she's right. You are. Oh, not this again. Carly, it's only for now, all right? Right, OK. Look, Max is at a mate's and I'm going to make us a nice tea. Yeah, well, you'll have to stick mine in the oven. I'm sorry, I told Nick I'd be there for six o'clock. Here, can you lock up and all? What? <sighs> have you given my author any more thoughts? Well, I haven't got a right lot of choice, have I? I'm still weighing it all up. I feel terrible about it. I really let you down. You've put me in an impossible position, Stella. I know it's a mess, but believe me, I am doing everything I can to sort it out. Yeah. I can see you are. I feel so ashamed. I've never owed money like this in my life. Well, you went to know the insurance wouldn't cough up. I know, but I should have waited till they did or, or made another plan. If I could give you longer, then I would, but... Look, I've got the suppliers snapping at me heels. I know. If it wasn't you I owed money to, there's no way I'd give away sharing that place. It's not just my life, but it's my life. Look, I'm not saying yes, because it all needs going through with a fine tooth comb, but in principle, we might be able to come to some sort of arrangement. Oh, thank you so much. That's it, mate. Thanks, Amy. So what, uh, what delights is he in store for us this evening? Oh, he's making us one of his fancy salads. <laughs> so what have you done with the letter? I've disposed of it. In my mind, ignorance is bliss, especially where my ex-husband is concerned. It's a massive deception. St. John wants Roy to contact him. What right have you to play God? Don't be ridiculous. I'm not playing God. I'm protecting. He's a grown man. He can make his own decisions. I'm serious, Sylvia. If you don't tell him, I will. Uh, <clears throat> has anyone seen my recipe book? Um, Roy. Mother. When Haley took me to see Dorothy, she she gave me a letter that hadn't been forwarded. Well, they should have systems in place to prevent that. It was to both of us, and uh, it's from your father. It was sent a long time ago. Postmark says two thousand and eleven. The stamp was issued in 2010. It's commemorative. Isaac Newton. It doesn't mean it was posted in 2010. Either way, it's old news. Aren't you going to open it? No. Aren't you curious to find out why he wanted to get in touch with you? No, I'm not. Huh. It's obviously a huge shock. Oh, don't patronise him. If he doesn't want to know, that is his choice. And I sincerely hope an end to the matter. What exactly did he say? Well, he said he's going to give the idea some thought. Oh, the Rovers is saved. You're engaged. I vote we crack open the bubbly. Well, he hasn't actually agreed. It's not official, Mum. Oh, you can let your hair down for one night. Besides, the guests will be here soon. What guests? Oh, just a few friends and neighbours who want to wish you both well. Who? Dennis and Rita and Michelle and Steve. Don't worry, I'll pay. With what? Where's your money coming from? Uh, Leanne, bottle of something fizzy, please, love. Mineral water. Alcoholic and fizzy. I've already told you I want now to do with this. I do. It's 20 quid a pop. Mercenary. It's a Wednesday night. Uh, make that two, will you? We've got some friends joining us. Oh, and I'll be expecting a discount. It's a family celebration. Uh, no, I'll be charging you double. Oh, hello. Come and join the party. Um, it's not a party. Oh, well, it's lovely of you to invite us anyway. <sighs> Go anywhere where there's free booze. Hi, Mum. Hi, darling. Hi, 
craving to buy some bread? Yeah, uh, we bought bread, biscuits, and ready meals. And fruit, don't forget fruit. Just don't want to pay them for prices. What's for tea tonight then? Indian. And then chocolate mousse. Uh, can I do the talking? That's all right, don't mind. She likes chocolate mousse. Oh, and I got to school on time as well, didn't I? Good, because I set very high standards, and if you let them fall, I'll be down on you like a ton of bricks. Oh, I've got something to show you. What is it? I got an above and beyond award. Hey, let's have a look. They're really hard to get these, huh? Yeah, they are. Presented for outstanding project work in history to Faye Windass. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Come here. Nibbles are on their way. Oh, lovely. Yeah, get used to this. Yeah. You ought to take Rovers up market when you relaunch. See if we can attract a better class of clientele. Well, I hear the Beckhams are looking for somewhere to get a decent pint. Uh, I like my clientele. This is a little bit over the top. Do you know when you're going to reopen yet? Uh, not sure yet. I miss the old place. Yeah, and me. You spent far too much time in there. Mind you, that dip is gorgeous. Mm. Oh, it's tzatziki. Mm. Well, congratulations to the pair of you. I'm very pleased for you. Yeah, me too. Thanks. <laughs> We're doing that well, 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 yeah. You're right. Yeah, I just felt funny. Funny? Well, uh, low blood sugar or something. I'll, I'll get a brush. No, no, no. Mm. I'll do it. Sit down. You all right, mate? Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, look, why don't you go home, look? I'll cover your shift. No, no, honestly, I'll be all right. So, anyway, yeah, Shane and a few of the lads are having a reunion. They've asked me to go along. When? Next week. What? No, just some pub in Staley Bridge. Did you stay over? Oh, I'll do it. No, no, it won't be a late one, but I'd probably need beer money and we'll get a bite to eat, something like that. All right. But if you don't think we can afford it... Well, we're not exactly flush, are we? Hi. Hiya. You all right? All right. Yeah. Hiya. Hi. Hi. I'm not disturbing anything, am I? Of course not. Oh, you're having your tea. Well, there's, there's plenty. Why don't you stay? Well, I was just seeing if you've heard anything about the pub. Only that it might be changing its name to the Builder's Arms. What? You're most welcome to stay. Uh, yeah, go on. Go on, then. I'm not doing anything else. I can't believe you dobbed me in. I just want to know what happened. Nothing happened, right? I just lost my balance, that's all. Which in this business can be fatal. Today it was a champagne flute. Tomorrow could be a Phillips Yeah, all right, all right. Well, I'll be more careful next time. So this just proves what we've been saying. You're burning yourself out. Oh, come on, that's rubbish. Oh, I think it's dead romantic. Getting engaged after he's saved her like that. I think I'd run into a burning building to save you, babe. <laughs> oh, yes, you would. <laughs> no, you really wouldn't. <laughs> Somebody should say a few words. Oh, Mum, well, it's not that sort of party. Don't we think we should start winding things up a bit? Oh, so I'm just getting going. Nick, another bottle over here, love, oh, when you've got a minute. Mum, shush. Oh, we should propose a toast, at least. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, everybody. Um, I wonder if you'd raise your glasses to the happy couple, Stella and Carl. Stella, Stella and Carl. Carl. <laughs> I, actually, I've, I would like to say a few words. Oh, Carl, no. No, that's all right. I'll, I'll keep it short and sweet, love. Oh. Um, I just want to say thank you very much to Stella for saying yes, finally. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, Whenever I walk around the place, people slap me on the back and say, well, what a good bloke I am for saving Stella's life, but they're wrong. It's Stella who saved my life. Oh. So, thank you, darling. What's going on? Uh, Carl and Stella's engagement do. No expense spared, I see. Yeah. I just have to extend my overdraft from there, cracking open the champagne. Nice uh, Prosecco. Mm. What do you want to drink, love? A uh, half. I'm counting your pennies. <laughs> like some people. <laughs> so what do you think? Shall I give this uh, reunion a miss or what? Reunion? Hold on, have you, mates? Yeah, I'd ever see him. I think we should go. 
Yeah, but can we afford it? We just need salt. So, we the lads you're in Afghanistan with. Yeah. Hmm? Oh, it's nice that you kept in touch. Yeah, mates for life. I bet it gets pretty intense. Yeah, it does. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Hey, no, no, don't be daft, don't be daft. And you're right, we've got a lot of memories, good and bad. Cheers. This wouldn't have happened if you weren't working flat out. How are you feeling? You felt the baby kicking again? No. But David makes up for it. He's driving me mad. <laughs> Do you want another? I've had enough of this. I thought you had better things to spend your money on. Like me. Uh, they've just got engaged. Oh, congratulations. Uh, we're just having a drink, that's all. M Mum's paid for it. Oh, bouncing cheques one day, swilling champagne the next. Oh. Well, I hate to burst your bubble up, but I want my money. I'm suing. What? So, no more fobbing me off with the share, eh? Cos it won't be a pub to share out by the time I'm finished. No! <laughs> They've got to be honest, but will they like what they hear? We've more brilliant all-star Mr and Mrs coming up next. And is it a case of a daughter simply struggling with her grief? Or is there something more to a man's death at a nursing home? Scott and Bailey investigate at nine.